Hello and welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. In today's session, we are going to be taking a look into the functionality that allows administrators to block TLS sessions with ESNI extension. My name is Veronika, Cisco Technical Marketing Engineer. And without further ado, let's get started. So let's get started by revisiting the main differences between SNI and ESNI TLS extensions. So SNI helps actually to tell the server which TLS certificate it should present in the communication between client and server. SNI also helps the server to host multiple TLS certificates on the server with the one IP address. However, SNI has its own drawbacks because SNI information on its own is exchanged within the TLS handshake and specifically within the client hello in the clear text. So anybody in the network can identify the true identity of the destination server where the client was trying to communicate to. And this problem is solved by something called ESNI, encrypted SNI, which is defined in draft IETF standard. ESNI extension essentially adds extra security into TLS 1.3 protocol, in which the most of the TLS handshake is already encrypted, and more specifically, server certificate details are encrypted. And with ESNI, obviously, we are encrypting part of the clan hello and more specifically SNI information. This feature adds extra privacy to the user's browsing data. However, with the rising number of TLS sessions in the network, malware is also leveraging or adopting the TLS encryption as well, and it could use ESNI for malicious activity. And with that in mind, we are going to look into the lab's demonstration to explore the behavior of the traffic flows with SNI versus ESNI flows from the firewall's perspective. Throughout this lab demonstration, we are going to establish TLS 1.3 flow from the client towards the discord.com TLS 1.3 capable server. And I picked this as an example because I know that this server is able to establish the communication with SNI, but also with ESNI. So let's jump into the lab demonstration. So as you can see, I have logged into the Firepower Management Center and I have displayed the access control policy, our firewall rule set. So let's revisit our configure rules so we better understand what should be expected behavior before we generate the traffic itself. So I have configured the blog rule to deny communication towards the Discord server, whether it's using application itself or uh, web traffic. But then I have, if we don't match this rule, then I have inspect HTTP or HTTPS connections, which will essentially allow the connection unless uh, it's associated to some known threat. Uh, and then if nothing else matches, then we should block uh, the traffic by the default room. So let's uh, open up the live eventing page to observe the traffic flows that are passing through the firewall. And let's generate two traffic TLS 1.3 flows over the discord.com using SNI information. And you see in both cases when I generated the traffic from Chrome and Firefox, the same access control policy rule triggered, uh, which was configured to block the Discord application. So this is the default behavior. So this is working uh, as we expected, but let's have a look how we can actually fool the firewall rules with ESNI or how attacker could actually fool firewall rules with ESNI. Um, let's clear out our logs and let's now generate the traffic from Chrome and Firefox, but Chrome is leveraging SNI and Firefox was configured to leverage ESNI. And you see that the traffic with using ESNI has been allowed through the firewall because of our firewall policy. But we can notice that traffic that was going from the Chrome browser that used SNI extension matched the 
blog uh, we press it like blog discord application however the firefox browser was detected as a web browsing so it matched the rule to that allow and inspect http https flows and passed through our firewall so so now let's revisit how we can actually block the flows that are using esni request and could potentially transfer malware from our organization towards the remote server as an example which we don't really want to allow as an administrator so uh, in order to block the tls requests that are using esni we navigate to ssl policy and we add a new ssl policy or edit the existing one but in this case we are not really going to configure any decryption rule we will just set up empty ssl policy in the way the traffic will be not decrypted but the clan hello will be inspected and blocked in case esni extension has been detected this is the option that we have added or exposed within the ui as per the firepower 7.1 or cisco secure firewall uh, 7.1 release before we had this option uh, part of the cli but it's capable because you can push this configuration towards hundreds of the uh, firewalls at the same time and basically once we set up such ssl policy we associate it to access control policy save deploy and that's it so let's wait for policy deployment to finish and i will actually speed this up now when the policy deployment is successful we refresh our live logging events and we will try to generate again the traffic from the chrome that is using sni and from firewalls they still configure to leverage esni extension and since we have block request with esni extension configured the firewall made the decision to block such traffic but you see we didn't hit with those two traffic flows the same rule because the first um, traffic flow from the chrome has been blocked by block discord uh, firewall rule however the firefox has been blocked by ssl block as a ssl block reason because of our configure ssl policy thank you for watching if you like videos like this Please make sure to subscribe to get notified anytime a new video is posted.